Welcome to Green Lane, home of Stand Athletic FC. This was such an amazing club back in the days. I've got so many good memories from this club. Just amazing. Welcome to Ewood Bridge, home of Stand Athletic FC. The club formed in 1993, but dissolved in 2009 after 16 years. Uh, the club joined the Manchester League and moved to the North West Countries League in 2001. In their first season, at the higher level, they won the Division 2 title, but were not accepted to the Premier Division in the Manchester League. After 12 matches of the 2002-3 season, they resigned from the North West Countries League and rejoined the Manchester League for the 2003-4 season. The honours that the club currently hold are the North West Countries Football League Division 2 Champions 2001-2, uh, the Manchester League Premier Division Champions 1988-99, 1999-2000 2000-2001. They have also won the Manchester League Division 1 title. They were champions in 1995 to 96. Uh, the club's overgrown pitch, which you can currently see behind me, with the Stand Athletic FC home supporters stand, is a, a sad reflection of early and successful times. This is Stand Athletic FC's uh, training facilities, which is uh, Astro Turf. Uh, it was home to the Kids Football League for uh, Stand Athletic FC, as well as uh, a training ground for the players of the club. As you can see behind me, this is the, the street that I used to live on Cedar Avenue do, during my uh, childhood memories. I used to live at uh, number 17, which is right down the road, and I, used, I lived here for 12 years. We've come to the park, which was my childhood memories from the age of when I was born up to the age of 14, as I lived down there. This used to be a park, as it was built in, in the 1980s. We used to have a massive thing going around here that was like an obstacle course and we had a load of like hangling things over here but in 2011 it was pulled down by the council, council as there was graffiti all over it and the uh, residents of the area was uh, damaging the equipment so they decided to pull it down and turn it into a memorial. You can see behind us and all around the general area there used to be another little tiny part around here which was actually better than the other one. They used to have some uh, climbing frames, uh, they used to have swings and that here but as you can see over the years as they pulled it down in 2007 and over the years there's stuff that's just overgrown with it and the council have not done anything about it and um, overall I think that this was probably the best one and really I think they should bring it back for the residents that are currently living around here because there's that many young children that um, live in the area there's nowhere for them to hang out with the friends and that because the park's been pulled down and that and I think the council need to do something about it. This is my old nursery which I was here from the ages of one to four which is Hilltop uh, Nursery. I think overall this is a really good uh, nursery for the uh, general area. Uh, it was built in the 1960s uh, by a person called Billy Thompson as I'm currently aware of I think. As you can uh, see behind us, it, uh, we have a uh, grain mill. Uh, it's, it's, it was built in the 1800s and it was used as a factory as I were of. I'm not sure what um, it was produced, but I know back in the days they used to produce coal inside the mill. That was uh, beginning of the 1800s when it was uh, first built. Uh, obviously this was another childhood, uh, childhood memory of mine because it used to be a market with a couple of cafes in and that and it was a really good uh, area to hang out and that because there was a massive indoor market with about 100 to 200 stalls and there was four cafes in there with a massive like kind of little theme park thing that they had in it but in uh, 2007 they pulled majority of it is down and as you can see in the area around us uh, it's been built into houses it's all been built into houses so they're not down not down more than 80% of the mill to make way for more houses around the uh, general area.
the Slope opened in 1973 and cost £450,000. In 1980, the Ellis Brigham shop was completed and opened. In 1981, over 3,000 people a week were using, using the Slope. In 1994, saw the biggest change in financial injection into the Slope at a cost of £380,000. In April 2011, the, the Slope finally shut its doors to the public. At the end of 2011, Ski Rosendale Social Enterprise won a council tender process. They opened to the public once again at the end of uh, 2011. In 2012, the Slope reopened its business for good. There are 326 inmates within the workhouse walls made up of old men and women, young men and women, and boys and girls. 100 lie on the sick beds of the infirmary. 72 are imbeciles or idiots, of whom 48 are females, 29 are boys, and 24 are girls. With five infants under two years of age, there are fathers and mothers here, grandfathers and grandmothers, and even great-grandfathers great grandmothers. The workhouse later became Moorland House Public Assistance Institution and then Rosendale General Hospital which finally closed in 2010. In 2012 plans were approved to demolish the existing buildings and replace them with 170 homes, new homes of mixed and affordable and high-end housing. Welcome to Rottenstall. The earliest settlement of Rottenstall was probably in the early medieval period, during the time when it formed part of the Forest of Rosendale in the honour of Cliverot and consisted of sim simple dwellings for forest servants and animals. Dragged up, uh, we feel the scratch marks on the floor. Dragged up to this Derby Dublin machine, which is the next process along. Uh, not entirely sure why it's called a Derby Doubler. It wasn't invented in Derby. It does double, however, because you have 44 cans on this side and 44 cans on this side. And each of the cans has a sliver that goes through the hole, over the saddle, under the roller, and down the table to make a sliver lap at the very end. So we're just making another big roll of cotton to go on to the next machine. All the, flat, the slivers are quite separate, they've just been rolled together. So you can pick them apart if you wanted to. This machine also stops when the lap reaches the correct weight as well. There's like a horrible ringing noise you can hear. <laughs> 